Today I'm going to show you how to get bass tone that cuts through a mix. Alright, so first let's just listen to that raw bass tone. All right, that already sounds pretty good, so I'm just gonna start walking you through what I would normally do. So first, we're just gonna start with high pass and low pass filters. So I'll open up the EQ so it's easier to see. All right, and so first, we're gonna set our high pass filter, which cuts off the low end, at about 35 hertz. The reason why we're setting our high pass filter at about 35 is because we just don't need the information down there. Um, stuff below 35, first of all, is really hard to hear at all. Um, and then feeling it also is not necessary almost all the time. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love huge, really low end, but 40 hertz is what you're looking for, not below that. Now we're gonna do the low pass filter, which is the filter that takes off the high end. So I'm gonna put that in right at about eight to nine K because I don't want the really high clicky parts of it. And oftentimes in bass guitars, you're gonna find that there's just buzz and annoying unnecessary sounds that aren't really part of the instrument up there. So we're just gonna get rid of them entirely. Next, we're gonna to go to EQ. Something really important to remember when EQing a bass is not to make too many narrow EQ cuts because with a bass guitar, what you're gonna end up doing if you do that too much is you're just gonna start notching out individual notes. So you're not really gonna be changing the shape of it as much. You're going to just be turning certain notes up and down, which will make it sound really inconsistent. So let's take a listen and see what this one needs. All right, so to start, we're just gonna start boosting in the mid-range until we find something that's a little too much. And then we're just gonna cut that. All right, so that already has cleaned it up quite a bit. Um, I know a lot of you right now are screaming at me saying, you're ruining the tone, but I need this to fit into a full mix. So it can't be across the whole spectrum and huge sounding. It has to fit and have the important frequencies that we need there and have the ones that aren't necessary turned down a little bit. So that last cut was right around 300, pretty wide. Um, I'm going to do another one right over 100, um, not nearly as deep. Um, but just a little bit, just because that area can sound really overwhelming and muddy the whole mix and make it sound like there's just a ton of bass when there's not really that much going on. Now for what may be the most important EQ move, which is the move that will help your bass poke through the mix. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a medium to narrow EQ band up at around 700 to 1K and start sweeping around until we find something that we like up there. So let's hear what that sounds like. All right, I like that the best. And you know what? I'm just gonna leave it poking out like that. Adding a boost in this range can really be helpful to helping your bass cut through your mix. All right, now let's move on to compression. So what I like to do with bass is have a medium slow attack and a medium fast release. So what do I mean by that? Um, I'm gonna put the attack probably around 30 milliseconds and the release around 80. So in this situation, I put it at 28.4 and 81.8, but somewhere around that range will get you similar results. And then I'm doing just a three to one ratio. Um, four to one would be fine. Um, this console just lets me do whatever ratio I want. And so I'm taking advantage of it. And then I'm just gonna start lowering that threshold until it's pretty consistently in compression. I don't want it to really be able to hit a note and have it not be compressing some. You don't need a ton, but you want it to be living in that compression. So let's see what that sounds like. All right, then as a last step, I like to use the output gain of the compressor to match the level, just so that you aren't losing a lot of volume when you're compressing it. All right, and so that's basic EQ and compression. Now here's for the trick. I am running a parallel bass channel. So what does parallel mean? It basically just means I have a second channel that has the same input going to it that I'm doing different processing on. 
I like to call this channel Dirty Bass because I tend to add quite a bit of distortion to it. So in this instance, I'm gonna be using Waves for this next part. Uh, you don't necessarily have to. A ton of consoles have built-in guitar amp simulators, and most of those should work for this process. So I am running the parallel channel out of the console into Waves into a guitar amp that looks like this. This is the Waves GTR plugin. Um, I'm just using the over bass amp type with the drive turned all the way up, the mid range turned all the way up, and then I messed around with the cabinet and microphone settings until I found one that I liked best. If you were doing this on any other console, you would still use the same idea. You would use your console's insert to go to that effect and then return it back to the channel. And then you would use your console's EQ for this next part. After you run the bass through the guitar amp simulator, I put an EQ after it and I do a high pass filter at 160 and a low pass filter around 1.15K. Here's what it sounds like alone. So I know a bunch of you probably think I'm crazy right now, but trust me. Now we're gonna add back in the normal bass tone to that and this is what that sounds like. I know it sounds a little crazy, but in the context of a full mix, it is gonna help your bass tone stick out in that mix so well without you having to turn up the bass a ton. It's also really helpful for broadcast style mixing because unfortunately, many of you are probably listening through an iPhone right now, and I'm sure you can hear the dirty bass way more than you can hear the normal bass tone. Having that dirty bass kind of tricks your ear into listening down further for the bass notes. So I'm not gonna show you a full mix with this, but I am gonna open up the rest of the band and let you hear what it sounds like in context. As always, if you're not using headphones or some sort of good speaker, you're probably not gonna hear the pace in that. But I hope you were able to learn something from this video and have a little more confidence when mixing bass guitar in a live environment. If you guys have any questions or ideas for future videos, leave a comment and I'll see you guys later.